Hi everyone. Okay, I see people are checking in and we are all here for today's Facebook Live. Fabulous, fabulous. Um, it's snowing here in Colorado, it and which is just crazy. Yesterday, Sunday, we went to a Bar Lake, which is up in Denver where they have the Eagles. And the February 1st is like the Eagle Day and Bald Eagle. So we went up to go see, to take a hike on. We went Sunday as opposed to Saturday, just because we had never been. And Nick likes to take the photos of the Eagles. And it was in the 70s. So I'm wearing a short sleeve. I had like almost shorts on. It was so nice. And today it's flipping cold <laughs> and it's snowing. <laughs> And that's typical Colorado weather. So not much accumulation yet, but it's getting there started. So um, anyway, thanks everyone for checking in and for um, showing up for today's live video. I see that we have oh over 50 people already signed uh, checked in. So hopefully we'll have no weather issues as far as with the internet goes. Just remember that if anything... Um, if the connection goes out or anything like that, uh, nothing. don't panic. This is all being recorded, so you can always watch the replay later. Not an issue. <laughs> so, um, oh, glad everyone's checking in. So, anyway, today's live. What are we talking about today? Uh, text on a path. That's what the topic on today's discussion is. And uh, text on his path is you need stitch artist or some sort of line object. So either you have a BE file that, that has been created that has lines in it that are set as baselines, but it's done in stitch artist. And then you assign the lettering object to work on that path. So, oh, wow, everyone's checking in and how they have multiple seasons in one day. And Joe, maybe you can get snow in Austin. <laughs> Yikes, that's, you know, we're used to snow. It's it's January, February. We better get some snow. Otherwise, we're going to have a really, really dry uh, summer. So I'm not complaining about the snow. And if it's going to be cold, it might as well be snowing. Because <laughs> I'm not going outside if it's cold. And I'd rather just watch snow outside. So uh, Pam's checking in. The One of the sisters. I thought I saw another sister check in before. <laughs> Anyway, all right, guys, so let's pop on in the software and show you some examples of text on a path, and we'll get, get playing and see what that's all about. Okay, so I, when we're talking about text on a path, you'll see that I have these lines drawn, and there's text on them, and they follow right along that path. That, so, that, there's, so there's two parts of text on a path. First of all, you have to have the path, and then you have to have the text. Now, if you only have one path or one line, you don't need to put numbers in them. But if you're doing something like a, um, I'm saying birth stat, but it could be something like a class reunion or something where you're putting multiple names and you want them to be shaped and different um, items that are going to follow paths, you may want more than um, one line. Now I see Nancy's it. So Nancy was here and Pam's here. Sorry, sisters. Always distracting me, sisters. <laughs> so so this I in this particular um, example here, I have four paths, so four baselines and four letterings on it. So let's talk first about a path. Okay, this is my path that I drew. It's just a line. Okay, so I'm in Stitch Artist. It doesn't matter what level we're in. I'll just go to level one so it has less confusing things on it. And I just drew a line. So it doesn't matter if your line is straight or if it's curved or if you wanted to make it be cuspy, but then you got to make sure that your stuff is not dividing on that pointy type thing. So when you have your, your shapes here, whatever your path is that you drew, the line, that is what the software is going to say, that's my path. So let me get rid of this ugly line first, okay, just because I have a nice pretty line here. Now, looking at the object pane, and you see it says line. Now, if I just click on the lettering tool right now and get an ABC and I can type in, um, let's go, this is a test, and I'll say that just because I am not very creative at this time, <laughs> and I just type my lettering I now, uh, that's all I got. 
I got a line, I got lettering, and they're not matched up. And that's because the letters don't really have a job. They're just letters. They don't have to know, oh, I need to be assigned to do something. To make this line become a path or a baseline, I need to rename it. So to, let me show you how to do that again because some people get confused. If you click on the, the picture, it selects the object. But if you click on the name, it lets you change the name. So if I type in baseline and hit the enter key, oh, you see the, the, the now, because there's only one baseline and one lettering object, those letters are assigned, they're kind of matched up. So they, the letters know they have to go to the baseline because I said the baseline, that line has a job. Now this line is not going to stitch. So if you go to your stitch simulator here and you run it, all the only thing that's going to stitch is the text. There's no stitching on that line. It's just an object and it's not doing anything. Now, as far as this, let me go into select mode so I don't get confused here. When I have my lettering object, I still have my control points on it. So if I wanted to move this text with the lower triangle, so I'm putting my mouse cursor on that lower triangle there at the bottom, it's kind of hard to see. Let me zoom in so that you guys can actually really see that. Boom. Dee -dee 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 -dee. You see each letter has an upper triangle, a center line, a center a dot, and then the lower triangle. Okay? So... It's, you have to make sure that you can zoom in so you can see what you're working on. And if you grab that lower triangle, make sure that you're putting your mouse cursor exactly where it belongs. And if you don't put your mouse cursor in the right spot, nee, weird things happen. So I'm putting my mouse cursor on the lower triangle and I can move stuff right along that path. If I put my mouse cursor on the lower triangle of another letter, it only moves that letter and the rest of the stuff along that path. So if you wanted to, say, put something in the middle here, like a little design and have some stuff on this side and some stuff on this side, you can move it and make a space. Okay? So it works the same way as like it's on circular text. But sometimes the, the why that's handy is because sometimes you'll notice, especially around curves and what happens when you go around an inner curve. Let me put my mouse cursor on that one and let's see what happens when I go down. Actually, this isn't too bad. Ha, imagine that. Lisa does an example and doesn't work do too bad. Make it a little bigger. Ah. See, when you have bigger text, you see how it got all schwinchy, schwinchy in there? So that way you may need to adjust your spacing because you have to, and then it goes off the curve, so I need to go and move it back on the curve. And it, I adjusted the spacing all over, but see, test is still kind of weird. It's just not, um, uh, it's, tech, uh, text, it's just, it's just not perfect. So I need, to, you have these adjusters to make them all perfect and move them exactly as you want further apart from each other. First question, can you put a design on a path? No, the tool is text on a path. So if you want, if I want to put a design on here, I just go and merge a design and put it wherever I want to. Um, if you want designs on a, on a line, that's a motif. So a design on a path doesn't, you move, put the design wherever you want to. There's no need to, to put it on a path, but it won't work anyway, because the tool is text on a path. <laughs> okay, so the lower triangle, let me move this back over to this side so that you could see it. The lower triangle grabs the letter and all the characters after it. The upper triangle when you grab the upper triangle, watch what happens to all the letters along that baseline. So I'm left clicking and holding, and look at that. They all move up just a little bit away, the space. And then I could see, okay, down here, this little test is um, needs to get spaced a little so I can move these guys just a little bit further apart, adjusting them, and they adjust above the baseline. So if you have, say, a badge or a patch and you're using that circular shape to put your text on the baseline in order to move it above that, because this, you may have, let me go and copy this baseline, command C, V, going to change it from a baseline over to a satin stitch. 
Do you see how you really wouldn't want it? Uh, you don't want that lettering to be right on that line because then it's going to be on that satin stitch. So you can have it a little bit above the line. <laughs> Isn't that kind of cool? Oh, hey, Eric, thanks for checking in. <laughs> yes, the, the text on a path is specifically a lettering tool option. <laughs> you're, you're correct. Hey, thanks, Eric. I'm glad you, glad you checked in on that. Okay, now, um, before I forget, I made a boo-boo on my website today, okay? I created a cheat sheet. Oops, it's too bright to see in the, in the camera. And I put it on my website to download. However, I, I didn't realize I was going to publish it to Facebook. And all these people started clicking and going in. And I couldn't test anything because it went to there. So <laughs> on my Facebook Live page that I put the link right at the beginning before this even started. So it's so-bubbles.com, Facebook Live. There is a link that you don't have to go to the store. You can just download the file directly from there so that I don't get all these messages saying, oh, about Jetpack and whatnot. I don't know. I don't, didn't want to deal with that today. So I put it all on that Facebook Live link. Just read through that whole page of information. You'll see the link and you can download that cheat sheet right away. <laughs> so saves me some hassle, a little bit easier for you guys. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, I thank you for, for posting it again, Eric. Um, uh, yes, I just, I did not, I didn't realize that it, my website was updating to Facebook and all of a sudden, kaboom, <laughs> all these, all these people went to go on. Anyway, it, it was kind of nice because I, I know all these people want stuff from me, but wow, how to be overwhelmed completely. <laughs> all right. Now back to baselines. Now that you have the information. And if you're watching this as a replay and you go to the, like in a month or so and that link's not no longer there, it's in my sh in the, under the class notes on my website anyway. All right. So that's how you add a, for when you only have a one baseline um, on one, one baseline. So one baseline and one lettering object. So there's no, if I add another letter A here, do you see my ABC, my lettering object? It wants to go back to that baseline. So if I don't want that one to haze, so what, maybe I want to put a straight line of text underneath the bottom here. What I need to do is where it says baseline, I need to actually give it a real address. So not just baseline, but put like a number one at the end of it. And then after the letters, I need to put a one at the end of it. And then this little ABC guy over here, he needs to just get, whoopsie, he needs to get, let me just delete him out of here, make a new one. And you notice he's not attached to anything anymore. He's just, he's all by himself. So I can put my name or put something else here like surprise. And voila, he can, he can get moved. He can do whatever we want. He can be a different font. He is not attached to that baseline because the only thing that is attached to that baseline is the text that has the number next to it. So we have baseline one and letters one. Um, someone asked if this can be done in the free trial. There is a free demonstration version which doesn't let you save, but it lets you play, lets you try all the features. And when you use the demonstration version, you'll want to choose in Brilliance Essentials and Stitch Artist Level 1. You can just use Stitch Artist Level 1, but then you can't really use, you can't do sizing with BX fonts. So you really want Essentials so that you can size your BX fonts. So anyway, <laughs> there we go. So here I have one baseline, that's attached, that's numbered, that's called baseline one. I have a lettering object that's letters one, and those two are connected. This satin border that I put on here, and you see how it covers that text? That is why I need to use that upper little guy there and move it a little further away so that it's nice and even. And surprise, which is the bottom one, is just floating around. He's not attached to anything. So do you see how the address that's put in the object pane, the number, that's got importance. So you need to just, you need to pay attention to those. So in this first example that I chose that I have here, basically I have, let me expand my design and we'll make our colors smaller so we can see everything at the same time. 
I have a design here that has baseline number one. That's the top one here. Baseline number two, which is the second one. Baseline number three and baseline number four. So I have four waves, just um, lines <laughs> that are uh, that were drawn and I have assigned them names so that each one of these can have its own um, its own lettering object assigned to it. Okay, now remember this is all can be done in Stitch Artist level one. I just switched to one so you could be able, all you need is a level of um, Stitch Artist. So I have it set to baseline one, two, and baseline three. And then, and I put those all in one design. Just do they have to be? Absolutely not. You can create separate designs for each one of them, but this just keeps them nice and organized. And, you know, especially if you're someone that just wants to keep things together so that you know where they are. It's kind of easy to find when they're all named baseline one, two, three, four. And then my lettering objects underneath it have numbers. So this one, letters one, this is just the default that we showed that I just did quick on the other one. Now the second one, do you see how it says letters and there's a hyphen or a dash and the letter C and the number two. So the two refers to baseline number two up here. So this lettering object is assigned to baseline number two. And that C option, C as in center, that centers that text on that baseline automatically. So wherever you put it, like if I take this one here, this letters one, I don't even have to click on it. If I just go to my letters one here and I rename it so that it has a dash C and hit the enter key, it just automatically centers that guy. Automatically. So the C centers your text on the baseline. So that's really kind of nice if you have like an arch or rainbow or if you're trying to start from the center and move your way out and, and work that way. M, so C and all the letters are on the top of the baseline. So it's like the bottom. So it's just like writing on cursive handwriting. You're writing your letters right along that baseline. The letter M, do you see the baseline and you see those letters right in the middle of it? Let's see if we can zoom in. When you put the option M on it, that's the middle of the text. So the middle of the text object is going to follow along that center of the baseline. Okay, now if you look at this center here, whoopsie, need to um, go to here. With, because it has the, it just has an M, it starts at the beginning. Okay, so when it has the M, it puts the text on that line. And when you put the C, it centers it. So guess what? If you put the C and the M together, so I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to hit the M, and I'm going to put the C, and hit the Enter key. Look, it puts a text in the center with the, in the M. Okay, I'm going to be doing spiral in a minute. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you guys are jumping ahead of me. I'm, I have these different designs. You see, I have different ones up here. <laughs> I'm going from the beginning. You can't jump to chapter 10. You have to start at the beginning, okay? So I'm going through each one of the options. <sighs> You guys are killing me, Smalls. And if you if you don't know where that reference is, you gotta watch The Sandlot, my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> so, and whenever I get exasperated, I'll tell my computer, you're killing me, Smalls. Okay, one more option here. The letter T, as in top. When you put that option in, the top of the text follows along that path. So the default is for the bottom of the text to go on it. The M puts it in the middle text on that line and the T follows it so that the, the, uh, the T, uh, so that the top of the text is going along it. These are controls that you, you, you need to know they're available. Will you do you need to use them all the time? No, but when you're drawing a logo and you have you put your circle, your patch, you're adding your text, you're like, oh my gosh, I need I don't want that 
I don't want the lettering on top of it. I want on the bottom of it, or I want it in the middle line, or I want, you need to know how to control this. So that's why I created that little cheat sheet for you because you know it's possible. I'm showing you the possibilities and the software gives you those options, okay? So they also work, and we've been talking mostly about, uh, we have been talking about open shapes, okay? So that's just a line whether it's a squirrels or outside of a shape or whatever. But it also works on closed shapes like, like ovals. And I keep mentioning ovals because um, uh, circular patches. This is like a super duper function for that. Now there's another video on the Embrilliance YouTube channel on the lettering on how to create circular text using the lettering tool and how to place your letters on top of the circle and copy and paste and then place them on the bottom. The beauty of having Stitch Artist and using text on a path is that you can have one circle. So let's look at this oval design here. I have one circle drawn and I have two lettering objects. One has an option of a dash U, which is like up on top of the circle. And the other one has the option of a dash L, as in lower part of the circle. So you can have stuff on top and stuff on the bottom with only one baseline. So you're not having multiple objects in your object list, which can be a little bit confusing at times when you're seeing all that stuff. Oh, I'm glad this is making sense. I'm getting thumbs up. I'm getting hearts. Fabulous. Ah. And as Eric said, if you're using this, we're not talking about using the lettering tool as far as using the circular text. This is all about just typing straight text and attaching that text onto a baseline so that you can just uh, have it have it where it was. And why is that important? As opposed to when you're using the lettering tool with circular text, if you happen to want to change the top one, like say you go in and you, oh, I'm like, oh, I wish it was a little bit wider. Well, if you're using a circular baseline, look at what happens when you reshape your circle. Both of them adjust at the same time. So uh, that it's a super duper time saver as far as you're, you don't have to um, do two at one time. Same thing works on a path that we had, um, that we are working on before, these guys. You adjust any of these paths, you have to be in create mode and you have to have your nodes, click on a node, move it, and all your text moves along with the path. So this is a uh, super time saver when you're working with that. And even you can move the whole darn thing around, you know, so even as <laughs> just imagine if we were trying to move certain two lettering objects, you'd have to move the top object and select the bottom object and move them over. Now you just move one and it's kind of like grouping, but it's not grouping. It's just they're attached. And the reason that they're attached is because there's the baseline, there's only one on this, and the letters, both lettering objects are assigned to this. Kathleen, you only need level one. Stitch, this can all be done in Stitch Artist level one. That's what I'm showing here. You can see my little menu bar down here at the top. That's Stitch Artist level one. Isn't that cool? Okay. Now, <laughs> sorry, I get, I get a little excited about some of these things. Vertical text. You can do this really easily in... As far as a straight line text, using your lettering tool, let me go and go to vertical text here, and we're just going to type in V-E-R-T-I-C-A-L, hit the enter key, and there you got vertical text, okay? Because that's a quick style with our lettering tool, just typing it, okay? Quick style, boom. However, what if you wanted your vertical text to follow the path? You know, right now you'd have to move all these letters one by one. And yes, there's a video, but if someone has Stitch Artist, this is just a lot easier to do this because you draw your path, you put your lettering object on it. And let me just do this one again, because he got, he, this is, you guys are going to go, oh my gosh. And I hopefully will get like 5,000 hearts for this one because this is like wicked cool. Let me draw my, my absolutely gorgeous path again. Boom. Now. This one is a line, and this guy up here that says line, he has a baseline number two on him. Do you see that? So this one I'm going to call baseline number three. 
That's because I want him, he's going to have his own, his own little guys here. Okay, so let me just reshape him a little bit. Whoopsie. Boom. And put him on here. I'll do this like that. Okay, so he's baseline three. Now, I'm going to click on my lettering tool. And it puts the ABC all the way up on the top there. I'm not going to ignore it. And we're going to show path. Oh, how about this? Brilliant. Hit the enter key. Now, if you happen to notice, I mean, I'm watching this go on here. Where did it go? <laughs> it's assigned up to that circle because uh, I didn't put a number on it. I didn't tell it it has to be assigned to baseline three. And the reason I'm not, I knew I needed to rename letters before I typed it, but yeah, I want you guys to walk through this so that when this happens to you, you're not panicking. I didn't panic. No panicking here at all. I'm just going to put the letters and I'm going to pipe in number three here and kaboom. Ha <laughs> ha. Isn't that cool? Okay. But it's going along the path just like it did before. This is nothing new, right? We haven't seen anything. I can, let me go and make it this a little bigger. So I'm going to adjust my spacing just a little bit so they're further apart so I can see. How did I get the letters to go the other direction? Well, first of all, I got to zoom in because if you can't see what you're doing, uh, bad things happen. I'm going to select my letter B. And do you see that B? There's a, a rotate on the outside, which just rotates that one letter. But if you grab that little blue handle on the inside and you rotate it, do you see that? And then do you see how they're all kind of on top of each other? So you got to go and you can take this lower handle and you can move them a little bit further apart so that they're not touching each other as they go around the curve. I mean, this is like wicked cool. Now, okay, I'm looking at this guy down here and this eye is really, he's going to cattywampus. If I grab this handle of the eye at this point, and I grab it like this, it only rotates the ones beneath it. So if you have like a, a, a little, 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 little <laughs> you can, you're, they're going to, lettering is so organic. It's, it's, it, every font is different. And the letters one next to each other is going to give you a different result just because it's, it's stitches. It's that's the way it is. So being able to adjust this on the fly and zooming in and I can just see, oh, this guy's just a little wonky. I'm just going to move him by himself and I'll just rotate him. So he's all happy, happy, slappy and matching it. <laughs> I see cools. I see love it's jumping for joy. Woohoo! Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, um, this is uh, mind blown. I am glad I, I've, I'm blowing minds. <laughs> I just, when I've been playing with this, I'm like, this text on a path is pretty darn boring. And that's usually because I'm thinking, uh, it it's usually for logos. And I'm not a logo type of person just because I like to do weird things. But just imagine the type of lettering that you can create and do crazy things with. Now... Finally, we're going to get to the circular stuff, okay? Whoop, not this one. The spiral stuff, okay? Um, is there... Okay, hold on. Uh, Howard asks if there's a numeric option for rotating. Uh, no, there, there isn't. <laughs> My excitement is contagious. Yes, it is. Uh, now, okay. If I type brilliant vertical and then assign three to it, would go vertical on the baseline. Eh, yeah, but you don't get the controls. No, just you don't need to be working. If you're creating vertical text, just don't confuse. Don't give the software too many options. Computers are dumb as a stump. They got cool functions, but if you give them too many choices, eh, I don't know. It, it might work, but why? It just regular text, and then you go that way, okay? <laughs> it, it's if you were making your text vertical and you drew a line, there's no need to do that anymore, okay? <laughs> so here's our spiral text. Now, <clears throat> when you use the lettering tool on uh, a circular text, if you spiral it inwards using the slider, you can make your letters go go in. But you can only do it in one direction. You can't go inwards or outwards. When you set your path to be a spiral, you can tell where you want the lettering to start typing. Does that make sense? 
So if we look at this first spiral here on the left, and we're, I'll, I'll draw this again for you. Let's see. Here it is. I've been create mode to see my nodes. I'm going to click on this spiral. This is just the default spiral using my spiral tool. And I'll show you this, whatever, um, in, in, a, in a minute. But when you have it set to the default, it's going to start from the inside and work its way out because that's how a spiral is drawn. It starts on the inside and it spirals, it draws out. This guy has a starting point and an ending point. So do you see the start is a green and the inner point is a red? Now, I there's a couple steps here that you have to do to take this. So let me start with a brand new page here, just so that we can just start from clean. So I'm gonna click on my spiral. I'm gonna draw my spiral. You probably don't need to be that big. Um, my spiral gap, I'm gonna set it, let's be 25 millimeters. That's about an inch. Okay, and the interior, that's the where that little curly thing starts. And I'm not going to start all the way in, but you can, um, let me, I need to make it a little bit bigger. It adds more, a little more spirals. Okay, so I have to create my spiral the way I have it. And I have my line set here. And I'm going to type it into baseline. And I'm going to put a one because I know I'm going to do a two. Oops, I got to put, let me, I don't know if I, I probably can get away with not putting a space there, but I always just do. Um, for consistency because I like them all to look the same. Okay, so there's my baseline one and I'm going to type, use my lettering tool and I'm not using circular text. I'm just going to type like tonight, uh, we shall try new things with text. Why not? Hit the enter key and it goes up there and does nothing. So that's because I need to add a number one on the end of this. And it starts at the biggest center, just like I said it would. And I need to probably space it out simply because when it's in that center, the letters need to get further away and you're gonna have to be doing some adjusting on that. But you see how it started from the big, that center part and moved its way out. And when I click on this object, it is a shape. Okay, it's, I can't, there's no nodes on it. So it always, there's no way to, to do, do anything with it because it's a, it's a, just a shape and it has, um, when I'm in create mode, I can go to shapes and, ooh, there's a reverse button here. <laughs> if I choose reverse, it doesn't do anything with the text. All it does is reverse the shape. So I just happened to see that and thought I'd try it. So we're not going to do that. Does it fit? All right. There's my little little guy here. Let me draw another another spiral because I can still, I can move this guy around. I can do all those things that we were talking about before. Let me go back into guy mode, select this, move my text. So it goes around the spiral. But I wanted that tonight to be on the outside. So let's make another one. I'm going to be in create mode. Go to my spiral, click, hold, and drag. Woo! Not so much. Move him over here. And I need to get my start and my stopping guy in here. So I'm going to right click on this to bring up the pop up menu that's going to say convert to curve. So that gets rid of my shapes property, but it gives me all of my nodes. And it has a green node and a red node. So let's watch some magic. So I'm going to type this on baseline two. I'm going to click on my lettering tool. I'm going to try out, whoops, how is this for a fabulous, yeah, fab, U, L, O, U, S, trick. Boom. And I need to rename this one to letters two, enter, and it spirals again from the inside out. But if I have this object selected, let me click on it here, and I go up to create, make sure I'm in create mode, go to my create menu, outline, and say reverse points. Do you see what happened? My red one went on the outside, my green one on the inside. And if I go to this lettering object and I now hit the enter key at the end of it, 
<laughs> Isn't that just fabulous? It's now starting on the outside. And at this point, I would go into create uh, select mode so that I can select this guy, grab my lower triangle, move him into here so that he is spiraling inside. Isn't that that? That's just fabulous. I mean, this is how you get the stuff to spiral from outside in or inside out. The trick is, is we have to pay attention to the, when you're doing, you have to be in create mode in order to pay attention to where, what color your nodes are. The red node is the ending point. And when you put text on a path, by default, it's always going to start at that a green one. So that's where it's going to want to start. So if the green one's on the inside and the red one's on the outside, you just have to reverse the points. And that's done from the Create menu, Outline, and choose the Reverse Points option, where it says Reverse Points up here. Okay? Someone asked, can you change it to size of the text? Sure. You just have to, let me get out of, um, so I don't get confused. I can just make it bigger. I'm just in Select Mode. And it makes the text bigger. You can change the font too. Now, see what happens when you make the text too big and it flew off the end? This is going to keep me awake tonight. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if it, it flies off the end, so you got to make sure you adjust it so it no longer does that. You can even go through here and choose a different font. I mean, when you have your lettering object selected here, just click on it. Go to your font list. I have block, but it works with any of these fonts that are on here. Now, I think I just chose one that was going to be way too big. Nope. Got to go rewind it back in, though, because, again, it's going to... Where's this one? This Boy, it's hard to think. Nope, that's the other one. Got to make sure I grab the right triangle. And that was the lower triangle that swoops it around. But the upper triangle is the one that goes and grabs all the text and makes it just a little bit further apart. So that gets away from that baseline. It's not my fault if you guys get no sleep tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm not. Oh, and if now say, see how how is on the bottom? I forgot the other thing. I'm going to take that. That's baseline number two, right? And let me move this over so that we can see what baseline number two. When you select your baseline, you see that it has the little rotate button on the top. So if I rotate, whoops, yeah, rotate this around. So that it goes in the top here because that's probably where you're going to want it. It rotates it and puts all the text around it the way it was before. So that's just wicked kind of cool. <laughs> Playing with stuff. I mean, the, the nice thing about when you're in, um, when you have this and you've already adjusted all that text on a baseline and you want to move the whole thing, you just move the baseline and the text is still attached because it still has the coordinating letters. Yes. Yes, Pam, there are no end to the surprises. And Brilliance is fabulous software. And... Um, it's just, just way, way too cool. Um, <laughs> yes, Christine, not as much fun as hanging in the mansion with one of the classes, but um, it is after hours and we do have fun. Um, we do have fun playing with our software. So um, I think, I think that was all the, the stuff that I wanted to talk about. Did I do that? Yes, I did that one. I did the spiral. That was the last spiral that I did. I did the text on the path showing all the thingies. Um, um, if your letters are piling up on each other, your curve is probably way too small or your font is way too big. I mean, I was playing... Uh, when you're first starting to play with the software, I highly recommend working with block font. Okay, block font is a nice, fabulous, small font, and it works. Once you figure out how to get block font working, now try and changing it. Because if this text, yeah, it gets all smunchy up in here. If I chose a big font, uh, oh, let's try it. This is going to be ugly, guys. Okay, ugly, ugly. 
<laughs> Guaranteed, ugly. <laughs> oh, it might not even generate. But see, it's all. This is all. This is not going to work because this font is just way too big. Okay. It's just you got to choose. You have to be kind of. It's that's why I said work with block font. Once you got the block font mastered, now you can play with all sorts of other stuff because um, it's it's there. But if you're getting gump, uh, gobbly gooks up in that corner, your baseline's probably too. Um, uh, what do you call that? Your curves are too small. So yes, baseline has no stitch properties in it. Da, 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 da. Okay. So you guys are having fun. I gave you some things to play with. Um, uh, oh yes. Uh, Lee asked, sorry. Uh, that's what Howard was, uh, answering. So hopefully she, she got that message as well, but, uh, asked, is the baseline going to show up? No, the baseline is just a guide. It's kind of like just a, a path and the stuff on the path is going to show up because it's just there. There's no stitches on it. Now, if you showed when I went, if I wanted it to stitch out, I would give it properties. But normally I, no, there's no need to do that. Anyway, okay. So I think we're all set, guys. Um, if you have any, uh, remember that I put, what did I say? <laughs> Was thinking about this. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, uh, the handout that has all the little shortcuts typed out in a table type form. They're all in the manual, by the way, you guys, <laughs> everything I give you, I'm not creating anything new. It's already in the manual, but in the, um, if you go to the Facebook live link on my page, the link's been posted a couple times above, there is a PDF file that you can download directly that has all these shortcuts on it for, um, this baseline lettering option type thing. So you are more than welcome to go download it now, um, whenever, so that you don't crash my system. Eventually, if you catch it, if you go to that Facebook Live page and it's not there, that means I um, uploaded it. It's already in the shopping cart and I figured out all the, the glitches. Uh, you know, I, I'm good at some things. I can make software dance, but this website stuff, holy smokes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you really scared me with all those orders coming through and I don't know how to troubleshoot it yet. So, um, anyway, have a great night guys. Um, uh, Bev asks if there's a new manual. The, ma the manual is always up, uh, on, is on the Embrilliance website. I'm not touching the manual. These are things that I create myself, all my handouts that are there. So it's, these are separate, just sheets. PDF files that you can get. The manual is on the Embrilliance website under the downloads link. And when it's updated, the whole thing is updated because it has a table of contents. So the table of contents has to match. So you can't just put an appendix because by now there have been so many free updates on the, um, on the program. If they only added appendix, afterwards uh to each one you guys would be like on appendix 50 by this time so that's like mm, no 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 <laughs> so they edit the manual so that you can always just uh, uh get it, get it what it was so it's there anyway okay uh glad you guys had fun i had i had a blast this was a great topic thanks for checking in and spending some time with me today and hopefully um I know the snow is leaving Colorado and heading someplace else, but be prepared uh, and stay safe and warm. And if you're in Colorado, stay off the roads. You should all be at home because this is a nasty, icy storm. So anyway, thanks for checking in. Thanks for communicating with each other on here. And I will see you guys online. Take care. Bye.